Hey everybody, Billy from Billy's Bike Adventures. Thanks for tuning in today and watching the video. Now today I'm going to be taking you through my motor vlogging helmet setup. I'll be taking you through from the very first helmet that I had and the setup that I had there right through to the setup that I use today on a different helmet. I'll show you all the equipment that I use as well and I'll tell you which one I prefer and why. If that's of some interest to you, keep watching and let's get into it. If you haven't subscribed yet, click the red subscribe button, the bell notification and then all to make sure you don't miss out on any updates. So let's talk first about camera position on the helmet, where I started and where I've ended up and the reasons why I've ended up there. So first helmet, here we go. Um, this is the Arai Tor X4. This is the very first adventure riding helmet that I had. And as you can see, I've got the uh, camera mounted on top of the helmet. And so um, I saw this on a, um, a couple of other videos when I first started, so I thought it looked like quite a good position. Um, this is what it looks like when I'm actually out riding. Now, as you can see, uh, in the shot of the, uh, the, the clip that you can see right now, and it's only minor, but you can see the peak of the helmet. Now, my personal view is, is that you, the viewer, should get an uninhibited view of what exactly what the rider can see, and it should be the best possible view of a bird's eye view from the rider's perspective. Um, whilst this does give a little bit of a bird's eye view from the rider's perspective, it seems to be a bit further away from the action because of where the camera is positioned. So for me, um, it's not really doing justice to the view that you should have as a viewer. Now, the other issue with having the action camera on top of your helmet is that you can never be sure that you've actually switched the camera off properly. Um, you may accidentally just do a soft press of the button and that might change the setting from uh, video through to camera. So when you press it again, you might think that you've actually pressed start on the video recording, whereas actually you've actually started it and you've taken a picture instead. So that's the other issue for me. Um, it, given the position, it's hard to, to say whether you've uh, turned the camera off properly, especially in the winter when you've got winter gloves on. The summer gloves are not too bad. You can actually feel a good press. But with the winter gloves, you can never be sure that you've actually done it properly. That's certainly my experience. Therefore, I'm not comfortable um, with the view or the control that I have uh, with the camera on top of the helmet. And so therefore, I've moved away from this and I will not be using a uh, top of the helmet mounted camera again. Now let's talk about a different camera angle with a second helmet that I bought for adventure riding. Again, this is an Arai Tor X4, black and orange this time. Uh, that went to go with my uh, KTM that I used to have. Um, now, as you can see, I've got the camera mounted on the side of the helmet this time. A little bit easier for the, the reach around, if you like, uh, the reach around for uh, the button on top of the action camera. Again, very easy to operate once you've got uh, summer gloves on, once you've got to winter and you've got thicker gloves on, much harder, to, again, to make sure that you've actually switched it off rather than pressing it uh, just slightly and then moving it on from video to picture, etc. The nice thing where it's mounted here is that you actually uh, can check in your mirrors on the bike that you've actually uh, turned the camera off. It's a little bit of an inconvenience, um, but at least it's better than not being able to see it on top of your helmet. So um, the other thing with the, uh, the action camera being on the side is that it's, it's the weight. It is actually noticeable, um, especially with all the plastic for what I use as the GoPro cameras, uh, the, the bulk of the weight of the, uh, the molded mounts and the uh, case for the camera um, you can actually feel the weight and so over a long day's riding it does make a difference to the strain that you get on your neck it sounds a little bit silly because it's not that much heavier uh, but it's enough to make a difference and uh, especially when it's windy um, you've got an extra resistance especially if the wind is coming straight on sometimes it'll catch and uh, and just you know move your neck to one side so not in a, not in a, a really bad way but it's enough over over a day to make it a little bit on oh, I'm sorry to, you know, feel one side of my neck's a little bit more strained than the other. So that's uh, um, the side camera mounted uh, uh, view from me. Here's what it looks like filming from uh, the actual mount. So, as you can see in this picture, you do get a, a little bit of a better bird's eye view from the rider's perspective, albeit it's from one side, so it's not a true uh, um, front on view from the rider's perspective. Also in this uh, scene as well, you can see that the peak of the helmet and the visor is in the shot as well. And again, that's something that I do not like. You should have, an, as I said before, an 
an uninhibited view of exactly what the rider can see. And so for me, this is just a noise that is in the, in the shot that we don't need. It's a distraction from the action that's going on uh, from the rider's point of view. So again, whilst it's, you, you do see a lot of um, side mounted uh, cameras on, on helmets, it's not one that I prefer now. I've moved away from that and I've moved away because um, the weight of the helmet and the view of the visor and the peak in the shot as well. So another con for uh, the side mounted uh, camera on the side of your helmet is that um, you can't always be sure that you're going to get the camera horizontal with the horizon. So sometimes, as you can see in this shot or cut this shot coming up, uh, you might get a slightly tilted view of the world. Um, and that's not good for you, the viewer. Um, not only do you have uh, the lid and the visor in the shot, but it's also slightly tilted as well. And so therefore, um, I'm not keen on this. It takes a lot to get it um, or a bit of an effort to make sure that it sits level with the horizon and, uh, and it's time wasted uh, messing about with these things to take time away from riding and, and doing some good recording for you the viewer to be able to watch so that's another reason that I find the side helmet mounted action camera a bit of a challenge and why I'm moving away from it so you can see on this helmet as well I've got a uh, chin mount and so um, this is for me the ideal location for where you should be placing your action camera when you're motor vlogging, or if you're just recording footage when you're out riding. It doesn't necessarily do motor vlogging, it could be just that you're catching, capturing video for your own entertainment. This for me gives the best bird's eye view. I have seen helmets that have had the camera mounted on the underside, on the underside of the, of the lid, uh, but that for me, you risk inhibiting the view a little bit from what you can actually see. This for me is the safest and most practical um, place to actually mount a action camera. Now, the beauty of this uh, particular mount is that um, you have no sticky pads uh, like the GoPros, okay, or other action cameras. Uh, you've got sticky pads that secure the, the mount to the helmet. Here, you do not have anything. This is a, uh, a mount that is removable. So you, the beauty of this is that you can change it between the different helmets that you've got if you've got more than one helmet that you use. That's the beauty of this. It's really great. So. It's a chin mount, so ideal view from where the, um, the viewer, you, get to see the rider's perspective, and it's interchangeable between different helmets as well. And that's why I love this mount, um, and I'm gonna actually leave it on my uh, Arai. The issue I'm leaving it on my Arai, the reason I'm leaving it on my Arai is because um, on my um, Aero Commander that I'll show you now, where I've got a different mount there, um, it's actually hard to, to securely lock the visor. So on this one, I can just about get it done. On my Aero Commander, I can't, and I don't want to risk damaging um, or uh, long-term damage to the helmet and the visor. Um, so I'm going to be leaving this mount on uh, my Arai Tor X4, and I really love it. So as I said, um, I am sticking with the preferred view now of the chin mount, and most of my adventures now are going to have this view from it as well. So what have I got on my new Aero Commander helmet uh, that can still make me uh, be able to record uh, a chin view um, point of view for, for you, the viewer, uh, whilst not using this mobile mount. So let's take a look at that. So we have the beautiful Aero Commander uh, in blue, red, uh, matte, a beautiful looking helmet. Uh, there's a card up top if you want to know more about this helmet. Uh, take a look at that. That's my first review of this particular helmet. Now, as you can see here, I've got the camera, my GoPro mounted on the chin of the helmet. Uh, best place, I think, for the best view. Uh, now, um, I've all I've done is I've used uh, the sticky mounts again as well for uh, this particular mount. Um, it's probably the, 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 um, the easiest and best um, uh, mount I, I can secure the camera with and being able to lock the lid closed as well without using the ribbons to uh, wrap around the front so I'm, I'm happy that I'm, I don't mind having the mount here um, and that's a, a nice setup for uh, the GoPro on the front of the helmet and I can still get a little bit of air intake uh, from the from the vent here as well so really happy overall with this particular mount looks really nice um, it doesn't inhibit my view from the broad uh, visor view that we get on the uh, Aero Commander. And the other thing that you will have to do is, of course, if you're using GoPro, you will have to use an adapter. So the adapter for me, uh, moving on from where I mount the cameras, uh, now the, the adapter um, has to plug into the left-hand side of the camera. So that will just slot in there. And what I will do 
I will then mount with double sided sticky tape velcro I will mount the um, uh, the adapter for the microphone just to the side of the helmet there so um, we've got the uh, mount on that side and the microphone adapter uh, connected to the helmet attached to the helmet on this side so that's how my uh, camera position and the adapter has changed over time now before we move on to the topic of microphones um, I want to talk to you about these things so that you'll recognize these as the GoPro securing uh, mount screws and as you can see on this mount I don't have any on this mount at all the reason being is that um, uh, these, these are um, quite fragile and they've started to disintegrate a little bit as you can see there and so what I've uh, started to do is to just to use uh, these small screws instead so uh, a Phillips head screw and what that does that means that I get a very nice clean looking mount uh, with no um, handles obscuring my, my, my uh, chin or, or the view or uh, it's just nice and secure so once these are done up uh, that mount is not actually going to move so I'm very happy with how neat it looks uh, and no bars sticking up below I have one obviously on the side here for the for the camera it can't get away with not having that there but apart from that there's no others and it makes the um, the mount look nice and tidy nice and clean and uh, is uh, the best option I think so don't use the the, the normal uh, um, hand screws that you get for um, the mount start using uh, just these normal screws to secure your uh, mount for your camera now then let's get on the subject of uh, microphones and so this is a lav mic uh, lavalier mic uh, it's actually quite a long uh, cable on this one um, important things that you need to know with this um, uh, the end of it, the uh, the did end, the pin end, um, I don't know if you can see on here, but it's got three rings on it. You need to know what connection your action camera will take. So for the GoPro and the GoPro adapter, it's a two ring uh, pin at the end. Um, it's the same as the mic I'm using to record today. Um, but on the GoPro adapter, you need on the GoPro microphone adapter, you need a, a pin with uh, two rings, not three. So if you've only got um, a lav mic that has uh, three rings, you can get adapters to convert this from a three to a two ring. It just means that you're adding a little bit of extra extra length. The problem with that is where is it going to go in the helmet if you're going to record whilst you're riding? That's the that's the problem. So if you've only got a three ring, I suggest you get a two ring if that's what's required for your action camera or your recording equipment. The other thing that you will need is a little bit of dead kitty and so this is just a, uh, a fluffy uh, dead kitten that they call it um, and that sits um, over the top of the microphone and then what that does is to uh, reduce or eliminate any wind noise that you're going to get. So a cover does come with the microphone right so it does come with its own cover but that, oops I've dropped it, um, but that is not enough. Uh, to stop any wind noise that you'll get within the helmet uh, on this mic so you will need a dead kitty and that just inserts in there you pull the drawstring and then that's going to give you your best option for not getting any wind noise on the microphone whilst you're recording in your helmet now um, uh, the uh, this particular um, lav mic has got quite a long lead um, so what you will need to do is just wrap it up and then secure the uh, residual uh, cable that you don't need inside the cheek part of your helmet. So remove the cheek protector, stick that behind the cheek protector and uh, secure your cheek protector back in the cheek part of the, or the cheek pad of the helmet. And then on your, so I've said with this uh, helmet, I'm gonna be having the uh, mic adapter here. So um, the, the cable will sit inside, I'll take that away, and the cable will sit behind behind here, behind the chin pad, and then uh, the end of it will uh, come out here and plug into the back of the uh, adapter here, which I'm gonna position here, and I will just use some uh, black tape just to secure the, uh, the cable overhanging uh, here, and that is your recording setup. Um, 
And it's very easy to do actually. Now, what you've got to be is very patient with um, your setup because um, you might not get it right first time. I certainly didn't get it right first time. It's taken me a long time to get to this point, not only with the camera angle, but also the position of the microphone. Now, um, with this particular helmet that the Arrow Commander, I've got a, uh, a chin curtain underneath. Um, so what I do is that with the chin curtain, I put the helmet on first, and then um, as with this microphone, this microphone has a clip to secure it to my shirt. So what I do, I use that clip and I secure that to the chin curtain on my helmet once I've put the helmet on. So I remove it from the chin curtain, put my helmet on, and then I, I just clip it on to the inside of the so that the microphone part is stuck on the on the inside of the helmet on, on the chin curtain. And then that is enough for me to secure it and make sure that it doesn't get any wind noise on the microphone. So thanks for watching today. I hope that's been useful, whether you are a motor vlogger or you are setting up your lid just for recording your adventures on your motorbike. Hope you found that useful. Um, of course, for the motor vloggers, uh, I hope the microphone setup has been useful as well. Key thing here is to have patience and just keep trying different things uh, that you like and that work for you. Um, it's taken me a little while to get to the point where I can record without any noise in the helmet or wind noise. Um, and have the right view. I'm quite happy with my setup now, so be patient and just trial and error to get you to the best place for you and what you want to share with either uh, people on YouTube, uh, other uh, social media channels, or just for your own prosperity. Links to all the products are in the description below, apart from the GoPro cameras. I don't, I'm not uh, putting links in for those, but for the, this mobile chin mount and Lavalier mics in the description below. Leave me any comments or questions in the, uh, underneath as well, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. You can also email me at uh, billysbikeadventures at gmail.com. So for now, thank you very much for watching indeed, and I will catch you again very soon.